Older second-hand locomotives are a great way into what can be an expensive hobby and actually relatively easy to get up to date with a bit of a respray and some detailing. But it's the electrical side of things we're concerned with here and I'll be demonstrating the addition of an 8-pin socket making my old Lima 33 DCC ready. I've already done a significant amount of work to the body with a complete respray, the addition of some detailing parts like the hoses for the push-pull operation, new decals, flush glazing and some new grab handles made from wire. I'm going to be adding some lights, but for this video it's the wiring of the socket for the DCC chip I'll be covering, showing just how easy it is to get your venerable locomotive bang up to date. For this I'm obviously going to have to remove the body again, but with the Lima 33 this couldn't be simpler. Just flexing the edges with a twist of the tip of a scalpel blade and inserting a wedge of plastic or even a thumbnail and easing it up and over the clips on the chassis. The visible lugs certainly wouldn't cut the mustard on a contemporary model but the ease of removal is a blessed relief compared to the shenanigans of getting into some of those. The first thing we notice is just how much space we've got particularly without the moulded glazing unit which usually holds down the weight. I glued that down when I did the flush windows. The DC wiring of the old Lima couldn't be simpler, with direct connections between pickup and motor. And whilst I could reroute this via the decoder socket, I've decided to take out all the old wiring and start afresh, making sure I remember exactly where everything came from. I've also discarded the little brown capacitor, bridging the motor connectors. We shan't be needing that. And with everything out of the way, onto fitting our DCC ready socket, so we can plug in any standard 8 pin decoder. I got mine from eBay and there are quite a few out there to choose from but I particularly like this one with its clearly labelled solder pads. You can also get them with different pin configurations but an 8 pin decoder will be more than enough for my requirements and I'll be using a nice fat foam sticky fixer thick enough for the ends of the socket pins that stick out the underside of the board to sink into so they don't short out when I stick it in position on the metal weight which halfway down the chassis seems the obvious place to put it and pressed home firmly I can get on with the wiring. For this I've treated myself to some specialist decoder wire which really does help make the job much easier. Its narrow gauge is sufficient for the kind of current we're talking about and it's easy to manipulate so we can tuck it away neatly. It's round about four quid for six meters so getting all four basic colors does mount up a bit but we'll only use a little bit per installation so if you're going to do lots of conversions it's definitely worth it in the long run. I'm going to start with the connection to the pickups on the trailing bogey, soldering the black wire to that spring clip, just like with the DC, stripping the ends of the insulation with my precision wire cutters I got specially for the job. Again, a bit of an investment, but one that's definitely paid off. I've oriented my socket so the pad for the black wire is on the right side, and I'm just melting a little bit of solder onto that and the spring clip before remelting around the tip of the wire. First the end for the pickups, and then on the socket, forming a nice shiny pool. Now onto the pickups for the motor bogey, and I'm going to need to wire from that little stub to the appropriate pad on the circuit board. I reckon my second hand loco has been modified at least a couple of times, so I'm pretty sure this isn't standard. But working with what I've got, one end of the red wire can be soldered to my socket, and the other to what's left of the wire from the pickups, ensuring we've got a nice clean connection. Then I can route it around the side of the motor, keeping it clear of any of the moving parts. Now for the grey wire, which goes to one of the commutator brushes on the motor. DCC wiring may seem complicated, but actually it's incredibly simple. The red and black wires take the alternating current from the track to the decoder, which outputs a variable direct current to the motor via the grey and the orange. So all we're really doing is splitting the original wiring into two halves, with the decoder in the middle. Then to finish up, at least as far as the motor is concerned, I need to do the same thing with the orange, soldering one end to the sprung brush assembly and the other to the square pad on the socket, laying down a bit of solder first, before trimming and stripping the end and soldering in place. Now all we need to do is fit the decoder itself, just making sure we get it the right way round before pushing the pins into the socket. Here I'm using a gauge master chip, but the great thing about our socket is we can use pretty much any 8 pin decoder and unlike a directly wired one, easily change it if we want. And if we want to add some extra functions, like some directional lighting, we can wire up the other pads on the socket. But that's a job for another day, so for now, let's clip the body back on and get our DCC conversion on the track, where it can join my other older locos, similarly modified, resprayed and detailed, bringing them bang up to date, all for a fraction of the cost of a brand new ready-to-run model.
And if you want to see more of those conversions, or any other of my model railway projects, don't forget to subscribe.